Mark Peters, CEO of one of the country's largest tech corporations, glanced down at the report in his hands, barely registering the city skyline stretching beyond the glass walls of his office. His mind was elsewhere on the woman who seemed to be undermining his authority. Sandra Brown, a recent hire with an impressive track record, wasn't just another employee, she was a problem. From the moment Sandra, a confident and sharp black woman, stepped into the company, Mark felt the shift. Her intelligence, ambition, and unapologetic presence unsettled him. She brought fresh ideas, the kind that could revolutionize the company's stagnant operations. But to Mark, they weren't innovations, they were disruptions to the carefully constructed hierarchy he had maintained for years. His office, sleek and minimalist, mirrored his leadership style, cold, controlled and rigid. No one questioned his authority and no one dared to challenge his decisions. But Sandra was different. She wasn't intimidated by him or the unspoken rules that govern the workplace. She was smart, independent, and most dangerous of all, unafraid to speak her mind. Their first meeting set the tone for everything that would follow. Sandra presented an ambitious, well-researched proposal that could dramatically improve the company's efficiency. The room fell silent as she spoke, the team visibly impressed. But Mark wasn't. He'd already decided. This isn't going to work, he cut her off sharply, his voice final. The rest of the team shifted uncomfortably, but Sandra wasn't rattled. I've run the numbers, and this approach could increase efficiency by at least 30%, she continued, her tone firm and unyielding. Mark barely looked up from his notes. We don't have time for untested ideas, he responded coldly, waving her off dismissively. The meeting moved on, but Sandra's resilience remained unshaken, her calm determination unsettling him in a way he hadn't expected. As the weeks passed, the tension between them only grew. Mark found subtle ways to undermine her cutting her off in meetings, disregarding her suggestions, even excluding her from critical discussions. His actions weren't overtly discriminatory, but the team noticed. Some quietly admired Sandra's persistence, while others feared they might be next if they crossed him. A shift was happening. One Mark couldn't see the balance of power was slowly tilting. At first, Mark dismissed the growing support for Sandra as irrelevant. He was the CEO. No one would dare challenge him. But as Sandra's influence quietly grew, so did his paranoia. He started second-guessing everything her ideas, her conversations, her presence. Was she trying to take over? Was she angling for his position? His mind raced with scenarios, each more irrational than the last. What Mark refused to admit, even to himself, was that Sandra wasn't just competent, she was brilliant. And her brilliance, combined with her race and gender, made her a threat to everything he had built. She represented change, and change was something Mark deeply feared. In one particularly tense meeting, Sandra proposed another bold initiative. And once again, the room responded positively. But Mark, unable to contain his frustration, slammed his hand on the table. Enough. We don't need to reinvent the wheel every time someone wants to make a name for themselves. The room fell silent. Sandra remained composed. I'm not trying to make a name for myself. Mark, I'm trying to help this company succeed, she said evenly. Her words hit him harder than he expected. For a brief moment, doubt flickered across his face, but he quickly suppressed it. He couldn't let her win. Not now. Not ever. That day, Mark made up his mind. Sandra had to go. She was too disruptive, too confident, too much of a threat to his carefully crafted world. He convinced himself that it wasn't about her race or gender, but about preserving the company's culture. Deep down, though, he knew the truth. He was scared. Scared of what she represented and what her success could mean for him. As Mark sat in his office drafting the email that would end Sandra's career at the company, a strange unease gnawed at him. He was doing what he always did, maintaining control, asserting dominance. But this time, something felt different. For the first time, there was a nagging voice in the back of his mind that he couldn't quite shake. He ignored it convincing himself that everything would return to normal once Sandra was gone. 
What Mark didn't realise was that his decision to fire Sandra would set off a chain of events that would change everything for both of them. At first, Mark dismissed the growing support for Sandra as irrelevant. After all, he was the CEO. No one would dare challenge him. But as Sandra continued to push forward with her ideas, gaining more and more quiet support from her colleagues, Mark's paranoia began to grow. He saw her as a rising star, a threat to his authority. The more successful she became, the more he felt his grip on the company slipping. Mark began to question everything. How could this happen under his watch? How had he allowed someone like Sandra to gain such influence? He started doubting his decisions, second-guessing every move she made. In meetings, he would steal glances at her, wondering what she was planning. Was she trying to take over? Was she angling for his position? His mind raced with scenarios, each more paranoid than the last. Despite his growing suspicions, Mark refused to acknowledge the real reason for his unease. It wasn't just that Sandra was good at her job, she was brilliant. But that brilliance, combined with her race and gender, made her an anomaly in a company that had been shaped by his own biases. She represented change, and change was something Mark feared deeply. In one particularly heated meeting, Mark's frustration boiled over. Sandra had once again proposed an idea that could improve company performance, and once again, the room had responded positively. But instead of engaging with her proposal, Mark lashed out. Enough, he barked, slamming his hand on the table. The room fell silent. I'm tired of these ridiculous ideas. We don't need to reinvent the wheel every time someone wants to make a name for themselves. Sandra, maintaining her composure, responded calmly. I'm not trying to make a name for myself, Mark. I'm trying to help this company succeed. Her words hit him harder than he expected. For a moment, he hesitated, a flicker of doubt crossing his face. But then, as quickly as it appeared, it was gone. Mark couldn't let her win. Not here, not now. He made the decision that day. Sandra had to go. She was too disruptive, too ambitious, and too much of a threat to his carefully crafted world. He convinced himself that it was the right decision that it wasn't about her race or gender, but about protecting the company from someone who didn't fit the culture. But deep down, Mark knew the truth. He was afraid. Afraid of what Sandra represented and what her success could mean for him. As Mark sat in his office, drafting the email that would end Sandra's career at the company, he felt a strange mix of satisfaction and unease. He was doing what he had always done, maintaining control, asserting his dominance. But this time, something felt different. This time, there was a nagging feeling in the back of his mind that he couldn't shake. He pushed it aside, convincing himself that everything would go back to normal once Sandra was gone. What he didn't realize was that his decision to fire Sandra would set off a chain of events that would change everything for both of them. The tension in the executive meeting room was thicker than ever before. Mark Peters sat at the head of the table, staring at the sleek surface in front of him. His outward calmness hid the storm of emotions swirling within. As the CEO, Mark prided himself on his ability to control every aspect of the company, and today, the control felt tenuous. Every week, he had noticed something unsettling sent Sandra Brown, the new hire, had been gaining the attention and admiration of the team. He didn't like it. Mark shifted uncomfortably as his thoughts spiraled. Sandra's growing influence was becoming more obvious, and it gnawed at him like an itch he couldn't scratch. At first, it had been easy to dismiss her, but lately he had seen it in the eyes of his colleagues the quiet respect they had for her. Some of them had even started referencing her ideas during meetings. What bothered him the most was that even his most trusted lieutenants were beginning to listen to her. The admiration in their eyes wasn't directed at him anymore. It was her. And that made his skin crawl. The meeting progressed with the usual updates, each department head droning on about their weekly performance. Mark barely heard a word. His focus was on Sandra. She sat calmly in the middle of the table, her posture poised her expression unreadable. He could sense her confidence, her quiet determination. The room hadn't yet shifted to her control. 
but Mark could feel it slipping through his fingers. Every meeting she grew bolder, more assertive, and it was only a matter of time before she made a move that would undermine him completely. Sandra stood up when her turn arrived, her eyes sweeping the room before locking onto Mark. She knew she had everyone's attention. This was her moment, and she wasn't going to let it slip. With a confident but respectful tone, she began her presentation. It was another bold proposal, backed by data and research that showed the company could cut costs and increase profits significantly by overhauling our outdated product strategy. The facts were solid, and even the most critical minds in the room were leaning in, visibly impressed. As Sandra's voice filled the room, Mark's anger simmered. He could see the reaction of the other executives' heads nodding in agreement, eyes flicking toward him as if waiting to see how he would respond. His chest tightened. This wasn't just a proposal, this was an assault on his authority. Sandra was pushing too far, too fast. She was showing him up, right in front of his own team, and it infuriated him. He couldn't afford to lose control, not like this. Mark leaned back in his chair, arms crossed, and spoke before she could finish. This all sounds good on paper, Sandra, he said, his voice carrying a thinly veiled disdain, but it's idealistic at best. You haven't been here long enough to understand how we operate. There's a reason we don't follow every shiny new trend. Sandra, sensing the attack, maintained her composure. She had prepared for this. With respect, Mark, the numbers speak for themselves, she replied, her tone firm but professional. We've analyzed similar implementations in the industry and we're seeing significant returns. Innovation is key if we want to stay ahead of our competitors. Mark's jaw clenched. He hated how calmly she responded, how she wasn't rattled by his dismissal. Worse, he hated that a proposal actually made sense. But admitting that, in front of the others, was impossible. His ego wouldn't allow it. You're missing the bigger picture, Mark snapped. We don't have time to experiment with unproven ideas. We stick to what works. The room fell into an uncomfortable silence. Everyone could feel the tension between them the quiet battle for control. Some of the executives exchanged glances, clearly uncomfortable but unwilling to challenge Mark openly. They had seen this play out before, but never with this level of intensity. Sandra wasn't backing down, and it was clear that she was growing more confident with each passing moment. Mark's thoughts raced. He had to regain control. He could feel his grip on the room slipping, and with it, his grip on the company. Every word Sandra spoke seemed to undermine his authority, and for the first time in years, he felt truly threatened. But what made it worse, what really gnawed at him, was the growing realization that Sandra wasn't just talented, she was better than him in ways he couldn't admit, and that terrified him. Sandra continued, unshaken. I understand the need for stability, but without innovation we risk falling behind. The market is changing. And if we don't adapt, will be left behind. There it was again her challenge, not just to his ideas but to his entire leadership. Mark's mind churned with anger. He knew the team was listening, possibly agreeing with her, and that enraged him even more. He couldn't let her take control. Not now, not ever. Enough Mark slammed his hand on the table, the sudden outburst causing several people to flinch. His voice was loud filled with an authority that was starting to fray at the edges. I've heard enough of this. We're not going to gamble with the future of this company just to chase some untested theory. Move on. Sandra met his gaze, her eyes steady. She knew now, without a doubt, that this wasn't about the proposal or the numbers. This was personal. Mark's problem with her went beyond professional disagreements. It was about power, race, and ego. He felt threatened by her presence, and it was clearer than ever in the way he dismissed her ideas, no matter how valuable they were. She sat down, her heart pounding, but she didn't show it. Her mind was racing. This wasn't just professional sabotage, it was something deeper, and she wasn't going to let him silence her. After the meeting, Mark paced his office, his frustration building with each step. He had thought the meeting would end the way it always did with him in control, 
with his decisions unquestioned, but today was different. Today, Sandra had made him feel something he hadn't felt in years, fear. Fear that his position wasn't as secure as he thought. Fear that someone else might rise higher than him. And worse, that someone might be Sandra. As he glanced at his inbox, his eyes caught a message from a board member. It was a simple query, asking for more details on Sandra's proposal. Mark's stomach twisted. The board was taking notice of her. This wasn't just a challenge from within the company anymore. If Sandra's influence reached the board, his days could be numbered. The realization hit him hard like a punch to the gut. That night, as Mark mulled over his options, he couldn't shake the gnawing feeling that he was losing control. Sandra had to go. There was no other way to stop her before she became an even bigger threat. But the more he thought about it, the angrier he became. Firing her wasn't just a business decision, it was personal now. She had embarrassed him, challenged him, and for that, she had to be punished. The next morning, Mark called Jessica from HR into his office. His voice was cold, his decision already made. I want Sandra Brown gone, he said without preamble, effective immediately. Jessica hesitated. Gone? You mean fired? But Mark, she's one of our most productive employees. And her ideas. I don't care about her ideas, Mark snapped, his face red with frustration. She's a problem, and she doesn't fit the company culture. Make it happen. Today, Jessica blinked, clearly uncomfortable, but nodded. She had seen Mark make harsh decisions before, but this felt different. She left the office, making a mental note to start the process. That evening, Sandra received the email. She opened it with a growing sense of dread, her eyes scanning the cold, impersonal words, termination of employment effective immediately. There was no explanation, just instructions to clear out her desk by the end of the week. As she sat in her apartment, staring at the email, a wave of shock washed over her. It wasn't just the loss of her job that stung, it was the blatant injustice of it all. Mark had never given her a fair chance. From the moment she walked through the door, he had targeted her, and now he had succeeded in pushing her out. But as the initial shock wore off, it was replaced by something else, resolve. Mark thought he had silenced her, but he was wrong. Sandra wasn't done. Not by a long shot. Sandra stared at her phone in disbelief, the email glaring back at her like a cold slap in the face. Termination of employment. Effective immediately it was sterile, impersonal, and devoid of any explanation just like Mark Peters. The disbelief quickly turned to anger as she sat in her car outside the office building. How could he do this? How could he fire her without cause after everything she had done? The injustice of it all hit her hard, and for a moment, she felt the weight of the situation press down on her chest. This wasn't just about losing her job, it was about something much deeper. She had felt it from day one. The way Mark had dismissed her, the subtle jabs in meetings, the constant undermining. It had never been overt, but the undercurrent of bias and resentment was always there, lurking beneath the surface. And now, this email confirmed everything she had feared. He had never given her a fair chance, and now he was trying to erase her from the company entirely. Sandra took a deep breath, trying to steady herself. She wasn't someone who backed down easily, and she wasn't about to start now. She had worked too hard to let someone like Mark take everything away from her. As she sat in her car, surrounded by the familiar streets and buildings of a company she had once believed in, she made a decision. She wasn't going to leave quietly. The cold, sterile atmosphere of the corporate office felt even more oppressive as Sandra walked through the halls for what she thought would be the last time. Colleagues glanced at her curiously, their gazes a mix of sympathy and uncertainty, but no one said a word. It was as if they knew something was wrong but were too afraid to acknowledge it. She carried a small box of her personal items, but instead of heading to the exit, she walked straight to the CEO's office. Mark Peters was seated behind his large glass desk, completely absorbed in whatever email he was typing. He barely looked up when Sandra entered. 
but the faint smirk on his face said everything. He was expecting this confrontation, and he was ready to brush her off like he had always done, but today was different. Sandra wasn't here to plead or beg. She was here to stand her ground. Mark, she said, her voice calm but filled with controlled anger. We need to talk. He leaned back in his chair, crossing his arms, his smirk widening slightly. Sandra, there's nothing to talk about. Your termination is final. I'm sure you've had time to process the decision, and there's no point in dragging this out. But Sandra wasn't backing down. No, she said firmly, this isn't over. You can't just fire me without reason and expect me to disappear. We both know why you've been targeting me. You've been dismissing me and my ideas from the start, and now you think you can get rid of me to protect your own ego. Mark's smirk faded as she spoke, his eyes narrowing. Sandra, you're overstepping. This isn't about you personally. You weren't a good fit for the team and I made a decision that was best for the company. Sandra took a step closer to his desk, her voice steady but fierce. Don't lie to me. Mark, you've been threatened by me from the beginning. You didn't want me here because I challenged you, because I didn't fall in line like everyone else. And let's not pretend that my race didn't factor into your decision. You can try to disguise it as not fitting in, but we both know the truth. Mark's face darkened his hands gripping the edge of his desk. You're treading on dangerous ground, Sandra. Be careful about throwing around accusations like that. You're already out of the company. Don't make things worse for yourself. Sandra felt the heat rising in her chest, but she kept her voice even. I'm not afraid of you, Morgan. I'm not afraid to fight this. You fired me without cause, and you know it. This isn't just about my job, it's about you trying to silence me because I wouldn't back down. But you can't get rid of me that easily. For a moment, neither of them spoke. The tension in the room was palpable. A silent battle of wills. Mark's eyes were cold. But there was something else there too, a flicker of doubt, of unease. He had expected her to leave quietly, to accept her fate. But now, standing in front of him, it was clear that Sandra wasn't going to let this go. Mark broke the silence, his voice low and hard. You can fight all you want, but you won't win, Sandra. This is business, and in business, people get cut loose. It's nothing personal. But Sandra knew better. It's always personal when it comes to someone like you. Mark, you think firing me will protect your position, but you're wrong. I know my rights and I won't let you get away with this. Without another word, Sandra turned and walked out of the office. She didn't feel defeated. In fact, she felt more determined than ever. Mark thought he could silence her, but he had only ignited a fire that wouldn't be easily extinguished. That evening, sitting in her living room, Sandra replayed the events of the day in her mind. The anger was still there, but now it was accompanied by a sense of clarity. She knew what she had to do. This wasn't just about her career anymore. It was about standing up for herself and for everyone who had ever been unfairly treated by someone in power. Her phone buzzed with messages from colleagues, some expressing shock, others offering their quiet support. Many of them were afraid to speak out publicly, but Sandra could sense that they were on her side. She wasn't alone in this, and that gave her strength. She opened her laptop and began drafting an email to her lawyer. She had already contacted him earlier in the day, and he had been more than willing to take her case. Now it was time to gather the evidence every email, every meeting note, every instance where Mark had undermined her or dismissed her contributions. She had been documenting everything from the start, sensing that this day might come. The lawyer had been clear this was a strong case of wrongful termination, especially if she could prove a pattern of discrimination, and Sandra knew she could. She had the evidence, and now she had the resolve to see this through. Meanwhile, back in his office, Mark was beginning to feel the weight of his decision. Though he had tried to brush off Sandra's accusations, her words lingered in his mind. There was a part of him that knew she was right. He had been threatened by her, and firing her had been a way to protect his authority, but he couldn't admit that not to her not to himself. He had to believe that he had made the right decision. 
but his confidence was beginning to waver. The phone call from the board member earlier had been unsettling. The board had noticed Sandra's termination, and they weren't happy. Mark had tried to explain it away as a necessary decision for the company's future, but the board wasn't convinced. They had been impressed by Sandra's work, and now they were questioning his judgment. As the hours ticked by, Mark's unease grew. He had expected Sandra to leave quietly, but now it seemed that the consequences of his actions were only just beginning to unfold. The board wanted a meeting and soon. The next day, Sandra sat across from her lawyer, a calm but focused expression on her face. He had reviewed the documents she had provided emails, meeting notes, everything that showed a clear pattern of discrimination. The lawyer was confident. This wasn't just a case of wrongful termination, it was a textbook example of workplace discrimination. I've seen cases like this before, the lawyer said, flipping through the pages. Mark Peters won't be able to sweep this under the rug. We have enough here to take this to court, or at the very least, negotiate a serious settlement. Sandra nodded, feeling a sense of relief wash over her. For the first time since her termination, she felt like she had the upper hand. She wasn't just going to fight this, she was going to win. Over the next few days, the ripple effect of Sandra's termination began to spread through the company. Quiet whispers turned into louder conversations as more and more employees reached out to her privately, offering their support and sharing their own stories of how Mark had mistreated them. It became clear that Sandra's battle was about more than just her, it was about changing a culture of fear and discrimination that had been allowed to fester for far too long. The momentum was building. Sandra was preparing to go public with her story, and as she gathered more evidence and support, Mark's carefully constructed world was starting to crumble. He had thought firing her would solve his problem, but in reality, it had only made things worse, and now he was beginning to realize that his time at the top might be coming to an end. The days that followed Sandra's termination were filled with a quiet storm of activity, while Mark Peters continued to navigate the corporate world with an outward air of confidence. Cracks had begun to form beneath his carefully cultivated exterior. He had thought Sandra's departure would be a simple matter, an annoyance at best, quickly forgotten as the company moved on without her. But the fallout from his decision had been far from what he expected. Word of Sandra's firing had spread through the company like wildfire. What had initially been quiet whispers in the hallways had grown into full-blown conversations behind closed doors. Employees who had previously stayed silent were now beginning to speak up, sharing their own experiences with Mark's condescending leadership and dismissive treatment. And most troubling for Mark, these discussions had begun to reach the ears of the board. For Sandra... Each day brought a renewed sense of purpose. She hadn't allowed Mark's unjust firing to crush her spirit. Instead, she had used it as fuel, gathering momentum as she prepared her case. Her lawyer, impressed with the extensive documentation she had kept, had begun drafting the legal complaint. Sandra knew this wasn't just about her anymore, it was about every employee who had ever been silenced, disrespected, or marginalized by people in power. And the more she prepared, the more determined she became to see this through to the end. But while Sandra worked behind the scenes to build her case, something unexpected was about to shift the power dynamics in ways neither she nor Mark could have anticipated. It was a Friday morning when Mark received the email. A board meeting had been scheduled for the following week, and the agenda included a special discussion about recent employee concerns. The subject line alone was enough to make Mark's stomach tighten. He knew what it was about. It had to be about Sandra. Her termination had clearly raised eyebrows, and now the board was taking notice. For the first time since making his decision, Mark felt real panic. The board had always trusted him to make decisions in the best interest of the company, but this was different. Sandra's dismissal had been personal, and if the board found out that his decision was driven by his ego, his position could be at risk. He couldn't afford to lose the board's trust. As the days passed, 
Mark's unease grew. He tried to act as if everything was normal, conducting meetings and sending out memos, but internally he was spiraling. The anticipation of the board meeting hung over him like a dark cloud. He had no choice but to prepare himself for the confrontation that was looming. The board meeting took place in the grand conference room on the top floor of the corporate headquarters. It was a room that Mark had always felt comfortable in a place where he had, for years, commanded respect and admiration. But today, as he entered the room, there was a palpable tension in the air. The usual small talk and pleasantries were absent. The board members were seated around the table, their expressions serious, their attention focused. Mark took his seat at the head of the table, trying to mask his growing anxiety. He was good at this presenting a confident, unflappable image. But today felt different. He could sense that something had shifted. The board wasn't here for business as usual. They were here for answers. The chairman of the board, a man in his late sixties with decades of experience in corporate governance, cleared his throat and began the meeting. The usual items on the agenda were quickly covered quarterly reports, financial updates and future projections. But then, the chairman's tone changed. There's one more item we need to discuss, the chairman said. His gaze shifting toward Mark, we've received several reports from various departments regarding the recent termination of one of our key employees. Sandra Brown, there have been concerns raised about how this was handled and it's been suggested that we take a closer look at the situation. Mark felt a cold sweat form on the back of his neck. He had expected this, but the directness of the chairman's words hit him harder than he anticipated. He had hoped that the issue would be buried under corporate bureaucracy, but it was clear that the board wasn't going to let this slide. The chairman continued, Sandra Brown was one of our brightest hires in recent years and her contributions were widely recognized across several departments. However, her termination was sudden, and from what we understand, the reasons for her dismissal were not adequately communicated to the rest of the team. We'd like to understand more about your decision, Mark. Mark straightened in his chair, his mind racing. He knew he had to tread carefully. Any sign of weakness or hesitation would only fuel the board's suspicions. He took a deep breath and began his defense. Thank you, Chairman Mark said, keeping his voice steady. As you all know, it's my responsibility to make difficult decisions in the best interest of the company. Sandra Brown was a talented employee, no doubt, but her approach was often at odds with the direction I felt we needed to take. Her ideas, while innovative, were not always practical for our current strategy. After careful consideration, I made the decision to terminate her employment based on her inability to align with the company's vision. There was a brief silence as the board absorbed his words. Mark watched their faces closely, trying to gauge their reactions. Some appeared thoughtful, while others seemed skeptical. One of the board members, a woman known for her sharp, analytical mind, leaned forward. Mark, we understand that not every employee fits into every corporate structure but Sandra's track record speaks for itself. She brought in new business, increased productivity in her department, and even gained the support of some of our key stakeholders. Can you explain why, despite all this, you felt she wasn't a good fit? Mark hesitated for a split second, trying to formulate a response. It's true that Sandra made significant contributions, but there were underlying issues that went beyond her performance metrics. Her attitude was increasingly disruptive to the team dynamic. I felt that her presence was becoming divisive, and as CEO, it's my job to maintain a cohesive work environment. The board member raised an eyebrow. Disruptive, how? From what we've heard, Sandra was well-liked and respected by her colleagues. Mark clenched his jaw, realizing that the board wasn't going to be easily swayed. He needed to regain control of the narrative. There were instances where Sandra refused to follow company protocols and challenged leadership decisions in ways that undermined the chain of command. While I appreciate her creativity, it's important to have a team that works in harmony with the company's overall goals. Her unwillingness to adapt was ultimately detrimental to our progress. The room was silent again as the board members exchanged glances. The chairman spoke up once more. 
Mark, we respect your leadership, but we've also been hearing concerns about a potential pattern of discrimination in the way this was handled. Several employees have come forward suggesting that Sandra's termination may have been influenced by personal biases rather than purely professional considerations. Mark's heart raced. This was it the moment he had been dreading. The board had caught wind of the underlying accusations and now his integrity was being called into question. He knew that any admission of bias could be disastrous for him, both personally and professionally. He had to deny it, and deny it convincingly. Let me be clear, Mark said, his voice firm. My decision to terminate Sandra had nothing to do with her race, gender, or any personal factors. It was strictly a business decision based on her inability to align with the company's goals. I take any allegations of discrimination very seriously, and I can assure you that none of that played a role in my decision. The chairman studied him for a moment before nodding slightly. We appreciate your clarification, Mark, however, given the seriousness of these concerns. The board has decided to conduct an internal review of the circumstances surrounding Sandra Brown's termination. We'll be bringing in an independent third-party investigator to ensure that everything was handled appropriately and that there are no underlying issues of discrimination within the company. Mark's stomach dropped. An independent investigation. This was worse than he had imagined. If the investigator uncovered even a hint of impropriety, his position as CEO could be in jeopardy, but there was nothing he could do now. The decision had been made. Of course, Mark said, forcing a smile. I welcome the investigation. I'm confident that it will confirm that everything was handled properly. The meeting continued, but Mark barely heard the remaining discussions. His mind was already racing ahead, trying to figure out how to control the damage that was coming. He had thought that firing Sandra would be the end of his problem, but now it seemed like it was only the beginning. For Sandra, the news of the board's investigation came as a surprise, but a welcome one. Her lawyer had kept her informed of the developments, and it was clear that the pressure was starting to build on Mark the fact that the board had taken the concerns seriously enough to launch an investigation was a victory in itself. It showed that her voice, and the voices of those who had supported her, were being heard. In the days that followed, Sandra continued to gather evidence and prepare her case. Her lawyer had advised her to remain patient the investigation would take time, and it was important not to act rashly. But Sandra couldn't shake the feeling that this was her moment. She had been pushed out of the company, but now the tides were turning in her favor. Mark's reign of control was weakening, and soon she would have the opportunity to expose him for he truly was. But even as Sandra prepared for the legal battle ahead, something unexpected happened. One of the senior board members reached out to her privately, offering a meeting. At first, Sandra wasn't sure what to make of it. Was this an attempt to placate her, to offer her a settlement? and make the problem go away quietly, or was it something more? The meeting took place in a quiet, upscale restaurant far from the company's headquarters. The board member, an older woman with a reputation for fairness and integrity, greeted Sandra warmly. As they sat down to talk, it became clear that this wasn't just a courtesy meeting. The board member wanted to hear Sandra's side of the story, not just the legal details, but the personal ones. I've been on the board for a long time, the woman said, her voice calm but firm, and I've seen many executives come and go, but I've also seen how certain people, people like you, are often treated unfairly by those in power. I wanted to meet with you because I believe your story deserves to be heard, not just in a courtroom, but by the people who can make real change. Sandra listened carefully, realizing that this meeting was more than just an inquiry. The board member was offering her a chance to shape the future of the company. It was an opportunity Sandra hadn't expected, but one that could change everything. By the end of their conversation, Sandra knew that her fight wasn't just about winning a lawsuit anymore. It was about taking on a broken system and helping to create a new culture within the company, one that valued fairness, inclusion, and integrity. And with the support of key figures within the organization, Sandra's path to justice was no longer just a personal battle, it was becoming a movement. Mark Peters sat in his office, 
Consumed by a growing sense of dread, the days seemed to stretch endlessly, with each passing moment feeling like a countdown to his inevitable downfall. He had always been the one in control, the CEO who could bend situations and people to his will, but the tactics that had worked so well for him in the past manipulation, intimidation, quiet deals behind closed doors were no longer effective. Sandra had changed the game, and for the first time in his career he couldn't see a way out. The independent investigation had begun, and every day Mark received updates that only heightened his anxiety. Employees were talking people who had once been loyal, or at least silent, were now speaking out against him. The culture of fear and control he had fostered for so long was crumbling, and there was nothing he could do to stop it. He had tried, of course. In the days following the board's announcement of the investigation, Mark had attempted to manipulate key players within a company. He had called in favors, offered subtle promises of promotions, hinted at future rewards for those that would testify in his favor. But one by one, those he had counted on began to distance themselves. The loyalty he had taken for granted was eroding, and with it, his power. Mark wasn't used to feeling this way vulnerable, exposed. The confidence he had always projected was faltering, and it was becoming harder to mask the fear that gnawed at him day and night. Meanwhile, Sandra's world was shifting as well, but in a very different direction. The case she had begun with her wrongful termination was now expanding into something much larger. The independent investigator was thorough, and the more she dug into the company's internal workings, the more evidence of systemic issues she uncovered. It wasn't just Sandra's case anymore. Dozens of employees, inspired by her courage, had come forward with their own stories of mistreatment under Mark's leadership. Each day, New accounts emerged tales of discriminatory practices, abusive management, and a culture of fear that had silenced too many for too long. What had once been whispered in the halls was now being openly discussed, and Sandra had become a symbol of resistance. Her lawyer was amazed at the momentum the case was gaining. This has turned into something far bigger than we anticipated, he said during one of their meetings. We're not just looking at a single lawsuit anymore. There's potential for a class action suit here, involving multiple employees across various departments. Mark Peters is facing far more than a legal battle. His entire reputation is at risk. For Sandra, this was both empowering and overwhelming. She had never set out to become a symbol of change, but that's exactly what she had become. The weight of responsibility was heavy, but she welcomed it. After years of working within systems that ignored her contributions and undervalued her worth, she was finally in a position to create real change. But even as she gathered evidence and prepared for what was to come, she knew that Mark wouldn't go down without a fight. A few days later, Sandra received an unexpected message from one of the company's senior executives. The woman, whom Sandra had crossed paths with briefly during her time at the company, requested a private meeting. Intrigued but cautious, Sandra agreed to meet her. They met at a discreet cafe downtown, far from the company's headquarters. The executive got straight to the point. Mark is in trouble, she began, her voice low but steady. The board is taking this investigation seriously, and the evidence is piling up against him. But you should know he's not giving up. He's still trying to manipulate the situation behind the scenes. Sandra listened intently, her suspicions confirmed. He's been trying to get people to side with him, the executive continued, offering promotions, favors, anything to secure support. He's desperate, Sandra. He's losing control, and he knows it, but that makes him dangerous he'll stop at nothing to save himself. Sandra nodded, feeling a familiar sense of resolve settle over her. Thank you for telling me, she said. I had a feeling he wouldn't go down without a fight. The executive leaned in slightly. Be careful. You've come a long way, but Mark still has influence, and he's willing to use it. You need to stay one step ahead. Sandra thanked her for the warning, and as she walked away from the meeting, her determination only grew. Mark's old tricks might have worked in the past, but this time she was prepared. The truth was on her side, and she wasn't going to let him twist it. As the investigation moved forward, 
Mark became more frantic. The independent investigator, a sharp and unyielding woman with a reputation for integrity, was making steady progress. She had interviewed dozens of employees, each one providing pieces of a puzzle that painted an increasingly damning picture of Mark's leadership. Mark had tried to control the narrative, to steer the investigator toward favorable testimonies, but it wasn't working. The people he had once counted on to back him up were no longer willing to lie or cover for him. The fear he had once instilled in them had faded, replaced by a sense of empowerment fueled by Sandra's courage. One afternoon, Mark called in one of his closest allies, a senior manager who had always been loyal. He expected a conversation about how they could contain the investigation, how they could present a united front. But the moment the manager walked into his office, Mark sensed something was wrong. I can't help you with this, Mark the manager said, his voice strained. The board is asking questions I can't avoid anymore. They're looking for answers. And if I lie for you, it's my career on the line. I've got my own family to think about. Mark stared at him incredulous. After everything I've done for you, you're just going to turn your back on me. The manager looked uncomfortable but resolute. I'm sorry, Mark, but I can't afford to go down with you. As the manager left, Mark felt a wave of anger and fear wash over him. His once loyal circle was crumbling, and with it his control over the company. He had always believed that fear was the most effective tool for maintaining power, but now it was turning against him. The investigation was nearing its final stages, and Sandra had become one of the most important witnesses. The investigator spent hours with her, asking detailed questions about her experiences at the company, the meetings where her ideas were dismissed, and the day she was fired. Sandra answered everything truthfully, knowing that her testimony was a crucial part of the case. But it wasn't just about her anymore. The investigator's questions hinted at a much larger issue of toxic culture that had been allowed to flourish under Mark's leadership. The stories from other employees combined with Sandra's account were creating a narrative that was impossible to ignore. Mark Peters had built his empire on fear, but now that same fear was turning against him. Mark's desperation reached new heights as he realized that the investigation was uncovering far more than he had anticipated. He had hoped to stall the process to muddy the waters enough to make the findings inconclusive, but the investigator was too thorough, too relentless. Each new testimony added weight to the case against him, and Mark knew that the board's patience was wearing thin. One evening, after yet another grueling day of interviews, Mark sat in his office, staring blankly at the city skyline. His mind raced with thoughts of everything he had done to maintain his position. The backroom deals, the promises of loyalty, the quiet threats, none of it seemed to matter anymore. His power was slipping away, and for the first time he didn't know how to stop it. His phone buzzed, pulling him from his thoughts. It was a message from one of the board members, requesting an emergency meeting the following morning. Mark's heart sank. He knew what this meant. The board was losing confidence in him and they were preparing to take action. The next morning, Mark entered the boardroom with a sinking feeling in his gut. The atmosphere was heavy with tension, and the faces of the board members were unreadable. The chairman, a man who had always been reserved but fair, spoke first. Mark, we've reviewed the preliminary findings from the investigation the chairman began, his voice measured but firm. The evidence is clear there is a pattern of discrimination and misconduct that has emerged under your leadership. We haven't yet reached a final decision, but it's become clear that your position is no longer secure. Mark tried to speak, but his voice faltered. I've always acted in the best interest of the company, he managed to say, but even to his own ears, the words sounded hollow. The chairman shook his head. That's not what the evidence suggests. We'll be meeting to discuss the next steps, and I suggest you prepare for significant consequences. As Mark left the room, he felt the walls closing in around him. His empire was crumbling, and for the first time he had no idea how to stop it. Sandra, on the other hand, felt the tide turning in her favor. The toxic culture that had once silenced so many was finally being exposed and people were no longer afraid to speak out. Mark's grip on the company was slipping. 
and with each new piece of evidence, the truth was becoming undeniable. But Sandra knew the fight wasn't over. Mark was still in power, and until the board made their final decision, there was always the risk that he could find a way to survive. Still, with the investigation closing in and the support of her colleagues growing stronger, she knew that justice was within reach. The day of reckoning had arrived. The boardroom was filled with a tension that felt almost tangible, a heavy cloud hanging over the company's future. Mark Peters sat at the end of the long, polished table, his posture stiff, hands folded in front of him in a desperate attempt to maintain composure. But his carefully crafted mask of confidence was crumbling. Inside, he knew this could be the end of everything he had worked for. Across the table, the members of the board were seated, their faces a mixture of stern professionalism and cold detachment. They had spent the last several weeks hearing from employees, reviewing evidence, and dissecting the results of the independent investigation. Now, the moment had come to confront Mark with their findings. The chairman cleared his throat, breaking the silence that had settled over the room. Mark, we've reviewed the final report from the independent investigator. The evidence is overwhelming, and it paints a very troubling picture of your leadership. Mark could feel his pulse quickening. He had rehearsed this moment in his head a hundred times, prepared his defense, but now that the moment was here, the words seemed to escape him. The chairman continued, his voice steady but firm. The investigation has revealed a pattern of discrimination, intimidation, and abuse of power that stretches back years. You've created a hostile work environment, driven by fear and control, and this company can no longer tolerate such behavior. Mark opened his mouth to respond, but the chairman raised a hand to stop him. Before you say anything, let me make one thing clear the board has already made its decision. Mark's heart sank. He had hoped for one last chance to defend himself, to twist the narrative in his favor, but it seemed that the opportunity had already passed. The chairman looked at him with a seriousness that left no room for negotiation. You will be relieved of your duties as CEO, effective immediately. The words hit Mark like a punch to the gut. His entire world, his identity, had been tied to his position at the top of the company, and now, in one swift move, it was being taken from him. The room seemed to close in around him, the walls suddenly feeling much too close. For a moment, he felt like he might be sick. The board members exchanged brief glances, as if confirming amongst themselves that the decision was final. The chairman spoke again, this time in a slightly softer tone, we've also decided that the company will issue a public statement regarding the results of the investigation. The employees and the public deserve to know what has transpired under your leadership. Mark's throat was dry. He had no idea how to respond. His carefully calculated facade was shattering, piece by piece. He had built this company, molded it in his image, and now it was all being torn away from him. As the board meeting continued, Sandra sat in her lawyer's office, awaiting the news. Her heart was racing. Despite the strength of her case and the overwhelming evidence against Mark, there was still a lingering doubt in the back of her mind. What if the board let him stay? What if they found some way to protect him to minimize the damage? Her lawyer was confident. The evidence is solid, Sandra. The investigation was thorough. They can't sweep this under the rug, not with everything we've uncovered. Sandra nodded, but the anxiety still gnawed at her. This wasn't just about her anymore. It was about everyone who had suffered under Mark's leadership, everyone who had been silenced or belittled or cast aside. She wasn't fighting just for herself, she was fighting for them too. After what felt like an eternity, Sandra's phone buzzed. It was a message from one of her former colleagues, he's out. Mark's been fired. For a moment, Sandra just stared at the screen, letting the words sink in. It was over. Mark Peters, the man who had tried to crush her career and silence her voice, was finally gone. She looked up at her lawyer, her voice barely a whisper. They fired him. The lawyer smiled, a genuine look of satisfaction crossing his face. It's about time. But even as relief washed over her, 
Sandra knew that this was only the beginning. Mark might be gone, but the company still had to reckon with the culture he had created. The board's decision to fire him was a step in the right direction, but there was still so much work to be done. Back in the boardroom, the tension had shifted. Mark's dismissal was no longer up for debate. The focus had now turned to the company's future and the steps they would take to repair the damage caused by Mark's leadership. The chairman turned to the rest of the board members. We need to be clear about what happens next. This company has been tainted by years of toxic management and we have a responsibility to make things right. One of the other board members, a woman who had been one of Sandra's quiet supporters from the beginning, spoke up. We need to start by addressing the employees. They've been living in fear for too long and we owe them transparency and accountability. Another board member nodded in agreement. Agreed. We need to issue a public statement, but we also need to begin internal reforms immediately. We can't just remove Mark and expect everything to change. The culture he fostered runs deep, and we need to root it out. The chairman looked around the table, his expression serious. We'll need a strong leader to guide the company through this transition. Someone who understands what's at stake and who can rebuild trust with the employees. There was a pause as the board members considered the weight of the task ahead. Then one of them spoke up. What about Sandra Brown? The room fell silent for a moment. Mark, who was still seated at the end of the table, felt a fresh wave of anger surge through him. Even in his dismissal, Sandra's name was being brought up. She had become the very thing he had feared all along a force too powerful to ignore. The chairman nodded slowly. She's certainly proven herself to be resilient, and she understands the issues at the core of this company better than most. I think it's worth considering. The conversation continued, but Mark could no longer focus. He was no longer a part of these decisions, no longer in control. His world had come crashing down, and now, it seemed, Sandra Brown, the woman he had tried to silence, was being considered to help rebuild the very company he had led for so many years. Two days later, the company issued a public statement announcing Mark's dismissal and the results of the investigation. The statement was clear and unflinching, outlining the patterns of discrimination and abuse of power that had been uncovered. The board apologized to the employees and promised to implement widespread changes to ensure that such behavior would never again be tolerated. For Sandra, reading the statement was bittersweet. She had won, Mark was gone and the company was finally taking steps to change. But the scars of what she had endured, and what so many others had endured, wouldn't fade overnight. There was still a long road ahead. The following week, Sandra was invited to meet with the board. They had been impressed with her courage and resilience throughout the investigation, and they wanted her input on the changes that needed to be made within the company. As she sat in the boardroom, facing the very people who had once turned a blind eye to the toxic culture. Sandra felt a sense of closure. This was her chance to help build something better, to make sure that no one else would have to go through what she had, and she was ready. Mark Peters, on the other hand, had retreated into isolation. The public fallout from his dismissal had been swift and brutal. His name was plastered across business headlines, his reputation in tatters. The once powerful CEO, who had ruled with an iron fist, was now a pariah in the corporate world. He spent his days holed up in his penthouse, nursing a deep sense of bitterness and resentment. In his mind, he had been wronged, betrayed by the very people he had helped build. But deep down, there was also a gnawing sense of regret, a quiet voice reminding him that he had brought this upon himself. He had allowed his ego and insecurities to destroy everything he had worked for. But it was too late now. His reign was over, and the world had moved on without him. For Sandra, the victory was not just about bringing down a corrupt leader. It was about something far more important ensuring that the company she had once loved could finally become a place where everyone's voice was heard. Where innovation and collaboration were valued over fear and intimidation. She had fought for justice, and in doing so had helped pave the way for a new chapter in the company's history. And as she left the boardroom that day, 
Sandra knew that her battle wasn't over, but for the first time in a long time she felt hopeful about what was to come. 